creation is a wondrous thing. It reaches throughout infinity, it expresses itself in endless varieties. Its true nature is joy, our true nature is joy, but the dark cloud of ignorance has hidden this truth from mankind. My daughter, David, all of you, this cloud of ignorance will soon fall even darker over mankind. For I see nature in our people. There will be fires. I see fires everywhere. And mankind will suffer. David, you will have a mission. To show the world and all its people through science and the power of the mind a solution to its problems. You will be guided. You will accomplish wondrous things. Men will scorn you, but remember my teachings, my words. Keep them, study them. Do not abuse the power they hold. Prepare yourselves for the devastation that is to come. But fear not, for we shall be together in the rebirth that is coming. Sorry, doctor, but my orders are to see that the hospital's rationing is followed. No more means no more. Look, this patient, all these patients are going to die one Those by one. Are Don't you orders? There's a whole city out there of people who need every bit of oxygen they can get. We've been over all that. I wish I could help, but I'm doing my job. You do yours the best you can. Another one. There's nothing I can do. They're sick and they're weak and they need more oxygen now. Without it, there's nothing I can do to help them. Thank you. Oh. At last, my appointment is confirmed with the World Emergency Council Friday, 1 p.m. I've been informed. Oh, you can bet I'm going to tell them how I've been hampered by you security people. Be my guest, doctor. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Oh, God. Oh, God. There must be something that can be done. I don't know if I have the strength to just watch people. Three, four ways. Simulate the nervous system. Through the brain impulses, to the synapses, to other areas of the body. Right, gotcha. David Charles, report to the disembarkation center. Mm. There you go again. Yeah. Oh boy. Listen, if you get any positive results, call me at the World David Government Headquarters. Okay. 
Paul? Yeah. You compare any results you get with Mark over here, will you? Listen, I hope they understand what you're proposing, huh? Uh, David? Huh? Didn't forget that. Your report? Might need it. The oxygen supply problem is affecting me, too. Good luck. Bye, David. Bye-bye, David. Advisement. A stage five alert is now in effect. Everyone leave the streets. Enter your rooms and take your government-issued dormant capsule. Take your dormant capsule. Everyone off the streets. This is a stage five red alert. A stage five red alert is now in effect. Everyone off the streets. Everyone leave the streets. So this report concludes that our medical facilities are overcrowded. That there's a, quote, unrealistic demand, unquote, being placed on our staff. That the current allotment of oxygen is inadequate. They're requesting a 10 to 17 percent increase in allotment. Now they say that our medical facilities, and that includes our entire network of facilities, is in a state of crisis without an adequate supply. Now listen to this. We're doing nothing but giving our patients an extra week or so to live. There's no recovery at this rate, unquote. Kent, are the hospitals following the directive to administer dormant capsules? It appears that we're having only marginal success, but... Yes. Dr. David Troth is here to see the council. Good, send him in. Ah, uh, Dr. David Troth, how good you could be. Chairman Price, gentlemen. Welcome, David. I hope you have something positive for us. We've just been discussing the depressing state of our hospitals. Yes, Dr. Troth, we're anxious to hear your suggestions. Are you ready with your report? Yes, gentlemen. Uh, I was very disappointed that you didn't send your suggestions before today. I would have liked to review your report. Well, knowing all of you gentlemen, I felt it was best to make my presentation in person. David. You're not giving the council much credit. Experience is the best teacher. All right. Suppose you get right into it. Now, everyone here knows David's work, or at least knows him by reputation. Gentlemen, I have prepared my presentation based on the problems as I see it. Now, with your permission, I'd like to begin. As you know, it's been nearly 100 years since the nuclear holocaust late in the 20th century. Even before that time, there were increasing numbers of environmental indicators showing us that something was wrong, very wrong. Like the growing numbers of killer earthquakes, the radical change in weather patterns, the recent devastating forest fires have uh, just aggravated the problem, consuming gross amounts of needed oxygen. I believe the oxygen deficiency problem is just another symptom in a long series of symptoms. Symptoms? Just what do you mean by symptoms? Gentlemen, our oxygen crisis, as well as everything else you are seeing, is symptomatic of a serious, call it, cancer of our planet. Dr. Troth, could you be a bit more specific? Yes. What are you driving at? I am convinced that to correct the lack of atmospheric oxygen, we'll need a revolutionary concept of thinking about our Earth. Please, David, spare us. Our concern is with the immediate situation. In my opinion, it is all related. Now, David, we're here to solve a problem, not debate man's past mistakes or the weather or... You're missing the point, Kent. To find a meaningful solution, we have to think in broader concepts. Now, David, please. You've got to understand that... Let me finish! Lewis, please. Dr. Troth should be allowed to state his findings. Please proceed, Doctor. We know cancer is caused by the introduction of carcinogens. Something foreign and not compatible with the body, and the, and the body can't expel it. Well, it's the same way with Earth. The years of contamination of our seas, lakes, the air, the nuclear wars, radiation, the planet hasn't been able to cleanse itself. The dying plankton and vegetation have led 
the disintegration of atmospheric oxygen. Gentlemen, these are all symptoms of a very diseased, if not dying, planet. We may have cured cancer, but we haven't yet discovered the cure for the Earth. And it's dying. All very interesting, Troth, but the Earth having cancer is a bit much. What we need are practical ways to help the people now. Help them. Your idea of a solution is putting band-aids on a dying man. Here comes our scientist in shining armor. Kent, I don't appreciate the asides. Kent, we're in a state of crisis and you're being a little inconsiderate. Now hear them out. We have to look at new approaches. Now, I, along with many other scientists and physicists, are beginning to look at our whole universe as if it were an immense intelligent organism. Each part, from living cells to planets to universes, appear to be separate, but in reality, they together make up a whole organism. If a disease invades any part of the organism, nature normally corrects it. If the healing does not occur, death follows. In my opinion, we are a diseased planet about to be written off by a larger organism that we are part of. You are saying that our planet is part of a living, breathing animal? I think that's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. If we're going to reject this whole thing on the basis of what you think, then there is no hope. People once thought the world was flat. They said it was impossible for man to fly, that pictures couldn't be sent through the air. Plants are alive. Atoms that make up rocks are alive. The earth is constantly changing and evolving as does every other part of the universe. There is an order to it all, an intelligence. A universal mind, an ultimate being that we are all part of. So I suppose you want us to drop everything, get on our knees and pray to this ultimate being? You do seem to have changed roles, David, from scientist to mystic. Come, David. What do you advise? What is your recommendation? My recommendation is to apply the technology our lab has developed. We've already proven we can contact and influence living cells and plants to regenerate life. Use this technology to, to send into the universe a powerful signal, a cry for help. Contact this universal intelligence to help regenerate our atmospheric oxygen. I believe it can be accomplished. It's all detailed in my report. Excuse me, miss. Ma'am, you may address me as Lieutenant Donner. Okay, Lieutenant Donner. Uh, I'd like to see Vice Chairman Kent, please. That's quite impossible. I beg your pardon. You heard me. I said no. You want to get tough? Well, I'll get tough with you. Now, I have been in 14 different offices in the Federation complex today, and I have just about enough of your governmental runaround that I want to but take today. Uh, I am not finished. I have all the proper documents. All I need is the proper signatures. Now, I have all the right papers, and you can just bet that I'm not going to let you get in the way of me getting the signature that I need. I want to see Kent, and I want to see him now. He's not here. The Governing Council is meeting in closed chambers right now. It's on the 84th floor. You are not allowed up there. Want to bet? And the Council agrees to the following directives. One, the immediate prohibition of all pregnancies. Two, a program designed to eliminate all oxygen burdensome animal life. Three, a project to develop oxygen-creating flora under the supervision of Dr. Morley Tantivy. 
And four, the reestablishment of the Comoducer 1 project in Space Lab 8 under the supervision of Dr. David Trott. That's insanity, gentlemen. You can't expect my lab. Individual responsibilities will be articulated via memos to be distributed later. But council plans in discussing this with you privately. The session's closed. Please reserve your comments until then. Five, a study to see how quickly the Comoducer project can be implemented in the public sector once the prototype has been completed. And finally, all research projects be placed under the auspices of the security division. All works in progress to cease immediately, and new projects will be assigned by the security division. We need marshals to enforce these directives under the control of the vice chairman's office. Now, on behalf of the Federation, I want to thank everyone here for your time and your thought. Session adjourned. Mr. Chairman, what possible good can come from starting work on the Comaducer again? The Dormant 2 project is inefficient. There's no way we can monitor who has taken their sleeping capsules and who hasn't. With a coma-inducing system, once someone is connected, we can control their oxygen consumption for as long as is necessary. Nine months were spent designing the original for space travel. It is unsafe. Some of the test subjects never regain consciousness. All the more reason to reactivate the project as soon as possible. We expect a prototype within 30 days. I will not risk human life by making hasty design changes. We have no choice. Either we lose a few lives now developing the Comaducer, or we lose millions later. David, your laboratory is being operated under martial law. I can have you shut down within six hours. Can't you see people are dying right now for lack of a better system? I don't think Dr. Troth needs to be threatened. I realize, Dr. Troth, you may not agree with our choices, but a decision had to be made. Do the best you can. You'll be saving lives in the long run. Gentlemen, let's call it. Oh, Lewis, I have been waiting all day to speak with you. Could I just have a moment of your time? Hello, Eve. Look, I just need your signature right here. It just, it'll just take a minute. Little Eve Adamson, a dedicated doctor. Oh, not now, Lewis. I really need your help. Eve? Really, there's nothing I can do. Look, it, it's already been approved, Lewis. I just need your signature. It, it's not for me personally. It's for sick people that need oxygen. Well, we're seeing to it that they'll be taken care of. Lewis, please, don't make me beg you. Would you just listen to me for a minute? Just a I'm moment of your... I'm sorry. Eve? Division of Research asked me for some possible solutions to the oxygen crisis. Oh, when did you arrive? Yesterday. Oh, how long are you going to be here? A week, maybe more. Although I think the council's already made up their mind. Ken already has other plans for me. Ken, I mean, he's just a council member. Don't be too sure. Chairman Price is just a nice little old politician. Ken's the real power. You can. Oh, Dr. Cross. Uh, thank you. I'll read your report by tomorrow. Oh, by the way, you ought to be escorted home by a marshal for your own protection. Hmm? Oh, hello, Dr. Edison. Oh, listen, could I just have a moment? I, I need to talk Not to really. you about my clinic. I'm clin in a great hurry. Why don't you contact Vice Chairman Kent's office? Good night. I'm trying to do all day. Oh. Good night. Let's see you. Everything's going to hell anyway. <sighs> oh, I'm so glad to see you. How have you been? Fine. And you? Well, I'm not very good right now, but... You look wonderful. Oh, thank you. You know, it's really nice to hear something positive for a change. Where are you staying? Oh, I'm, I'm in the new government complex. And you? They have me booked into a temporary government quarters, Section A of the new complex. Mm, yes. Can I walk you home? <laughs> I haven't laughed in so long. I'm really good.
notice about uh, being moved to a government disembarkation center somewhere in Houston. Something about a rehab project. I don't know what's going to happen to him, David. I don't know what's going to happen to any of the sick and ill, really. What do you mean? Oh, I just... I've been hearing a lot of rumors about, about sending the sick and elderly to an asteroid for their protection. I, I'm really frightened at something else. What? I don't know, just rumors. I've been, I've been picking up information here. some talk about, about sending these people to an unknown destination. Some place where they can die without anybody noticing. David, I'm worried sick about my father. I'm worried about everything. I'm scared. I'm really scared. I found it brilliant, just fascinating. I, I found what you say were utterly compelling. I can't fault your logic at all. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It will work, I know. David, now, we debated your proposal before you arrived this morning. And uh, frankly, the, uh, the majority feels it's, it's hypothetical, a, a long shot. But I have clinical evidence to back up everything I proposed. This is not just a theory. David, your reputation as a biological healer is well known. But we need the comaducer to buy us time for a better way. And we need you to oversee it. You want the impossible. David. Mr. Chairman, it goes completely against everything I feel emotionally, intellectually. Now, David. I can't do it. Listen to me for a moment. No. Find another man. Hear me out. Now, David, we're not asking you. We're telling you. On what grounds? We're in a state of crisis. The decision of the council is law. I like you, David. I always have. But your value in our estimation is to the job we need accomplished. We need to buy time. How do you expect me to do something that I don't think will work? David, the last thing we want is to see your laboratory closed and have you arrested for not obeying the orders of the council. Kent. <sighs> well, I've given my recommendations. If you've ignored them, there's nothing more to discuss, is there? That man could be dangerous. He'll come around. Dave is with me. He's here for a week and he wants to see you. Hello, Hermes. It's so good to see you. I've been thinking of my great teacher. Yes. David looks well, doesn't he, Father? But David, you're not distressed. Tell me. Oh, it's mostly the problem of solving this crisis. 
David, the crisis is within you. You are trying to make a difficult decision. It's hard to hide anything from you, Hermes. David, you are not remembering your lessons. That which lays heavy on our heart can be resolved if we turn within. For there, the truth and the answer shall be found. But the government has told me to work on a project I don't believe in. In all dilemmas lie the seed of opportunity. I don't believe the Comeducer will work. Sometimes one must use the opportunities at hand. The Gladiator's Arena can be used for battle, yes, but it can also be used as a gathering place for peaceful worship. It's how you use it. But I do not want to work for the Council. To resist blindly is foolish. In martial arts, the art of winning is sometimes not to resist, but to use the thrust of the adversary. You mean take on the project that they want me to do? But use the time at the lab to work on the project that I believe in. Sometimes compromise is the better alternative. But if I compromise too much, I may not succeed at either. David. You once told me that you believed all things were possible and that all the knowledge you needed was within you. Have you forgotten that truth? Hermes, I am just a man, not a miracle worker. David, you are everything you believe yourself to be. David, father needs his rest. I need you. David, I shall always be with you. Goodbye, my father. I'll see you next week. David, you will not fail. Vice Chairman's office. You're going to take my clinic away? What about my patients? They've been designated for the rehab program. What? They're being transported to a special center where they'll be looked after, rehabilitated. We're seeing to it that they'll be taken care of. And I must ask you to leave. Oh, no. This is my hospital. I'm not going anywhere. If necessary, Doctor, you'll be removed by force. No, you can't do that. This is my clinic. I'm sorry, Doctor. Not anymore. I'd like some computers out. Uh, security clearance, please. Okay, we got area three is available over there. Key security clearance number. Security check. Proceed. Query, Rehab 1 program. Purpose, treatment and handling of patients contaminated with nuclear radiation. Formulated 1996 after Sino-Soviet nuclear conflict. Advise on present status. Terminated 1999 upon outbreak of five years civil war. Advise on Federation utilization of Rehab 1 program. Repeat, program terminated 1999. No correlation with Rehab 1 program. Advise as to computer's most recent GC directive update. As of 18 May, the following directives were legislated. Ban on child conception, effective immediately. All species of oxygen burdensome animals to be categorically eliminated. Correlate Rehab 1 program with the following. Vice Chairman Lewis Kent, individual classified usages. Security override. Security override. Damn. Security override. Security override. Security override. Hermes be with me. 
patience. You cannot force answers to questions. They come in their own time and their own way. All right. That frequency definitely makes the plant sample respond. Check out the reading, Linda. Go ahead. Take a look. Let me see. The amount of carbon monoxide it absorbed is much higher. It works. Now, in one minute, I want to see how much oxygen it puts out. Paul, oh. hmm? check out Tross report. Oh, looking good. Oh. <laughs> David's theory was absolutely right. The plant responds to the stimuli. People, right. do we work for a genius or not? <laughs> Encouraging, huh? Paul Koblenz, report to communications room. That's David. Paul uh, Koblenz, report to communications <laughs> I think he just... <laughs> Paul Koblenz, report to communications room. Higher in the carbon. Okay, operator, I'll take it. Go ahead, station 12. Hello, David. Can anyone hear us? Yeah, it's just Callahan. Why? I'll put on the headphones anyway. What? What's the mystery, David? Listen carefully. First, they ordered me to head up the production of the comaducer. I refused until I was threatened with arrest. We'll begin work when I return. Second, Continue with our experiments. Don't stop no matter what. And last, find out anything you can about a government project named Rehab One. If you have to, plug into government classified computers. But keep it confidential. My number at the World Council... It's World Council Building 84A. You got it? Rehab One 84A. I'll be in touch, David. You're eligible by either being over 65, handicapped, or suffering from a serious illness. You may qualify for the government-sponsored rehab program, designed to aid those citizens who are in need of special attention. Remember, your government is here to serve your needs. For more information, call Rehab 8800. Yes. I have an interspace call for you. Go ahead, Oracle. Go ahead. Scoblins, I have some interesting news for you. It wasn't easy to get this. Go on. You know the Rehab One program you requested information on? Well, I've got it, David, and it's hot. Go ahead. I had to lie a lot to the computer, David. Here goes. I'll read it. Project Rehab One. Information classification AAA. Purpose of mission. To remove from society those persons deemed to be a burden on the resources of the healthy population. Any person 65 years of age, handicapped, or classified as in poor health, will be sent to this embarkation center's process with all due intention of being sent to new specific asteroids for health reasons. Now get this, David. These people, once at a predetermined orbital position, will be administered fenzine gas and ejected. Consequences minimal. Bursting of lungs, bodily fluids, thermal evaporative until residue is absorbed in surroundings. No traces should be observable after 30 days. End quote, my friend. My God, I don't believe it. Paul, don't discuss this with anyone. And destroy your copy. Anything more? No, Paul. This is very disturbing news. Go on with the laser project and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourself, boss. You, doctor, but we have orders to escort you to the main security building. Are you serious? Do you know what time it is? Director of security. 
personal order. See for yourself. What well, is Kenneth? I'll see him in the morning. I'm sorry, sir. You're needed now. All right, I'll get my coat. What is going on? Where, where is Kent? Your questions will be answered in time. Kent, what's going on? Am I under arrest? What? Relax, David. Would you care for something? Not at this hour. Now, what's going on? Step outside. I'll call if I need you. Sit down, David. Now, what is this all about? I wanted to speak to you personally and give you some advice. Louis, we have known each other for years. What is with all this formal routine? David, I want to make a few points perfectly clear to you. We are in a state of crisis, more serious than ever before. The old democratic ways of dealing with people just don't apply anymore. We are operating under martial law, and it is my responsibility to see that those laws are enforced and carried out for the good of the majority. Look, I was requested to bring the committee a recommendation. They rejected it. I have accepted your proposal. Now, I'd like to go back to my lab. I have information that you're suspected of using one of our computers illegally to get information that does not concern you. I don't know why you wanted it. I don't know what you plan on doing with it. But I will let it go with just a warning. Damn it, David, just do your job and don't meddle into affairs that aren't related to your assignment. Is that all? Sit down, David. David. You're under my jurisdiction now. Cooperate. It's in your own best interest. Or... Or... Face arrest for disobeying a directive of the Emergency Council, engaging in unauthorized experiments, and obtaining classified information illegally. Oh, yes. For your own good, as well as for security reasons, don't get involved with Eve or her father Hermes. Why would you say that? Quite frankly, David, Hermes is considered to be a subversive to the government, a dissident, a troublemaker. He's different. He's not good for the people. Why Eve Adamson? I have my own reasons. Just leave it at that. Tell me, Ken. Can't I go anywhere or see anyone without you spying on me? I'm no threat to your security, nor is Eve Adamson. Just do as I ask and stop fighting us, huh, David? And tomorrow, I'd like to know about your schedule for the Comoducers production. You have thought about a schedule, haven't you? Yes. Now, if you don't mind, I'm tired. Your guards got me up in the middle of the night. And I don't work very well with people hanging over my shoulder. Good night, Dr. Troth. Who is it? It's David. For God's sake, do you know what time it is? I haven't thought you. Come on. David, you look so tired. I've got a problem. You're the only one I can talk to. What's going on? start the rehab one project it's worse than you can imagine what mass extermination genocide of the sick and elderly are you sure oh my god what about hermes we'll get him out oh, how, who told you about the rehab project how'd you find out my assistant on the oracle he got the information for me oh god damn it five hours later Two guards show up and take me to the security building. Why, what for? Kent knew everything five hours after it happened. He knew about a private communication I had with my assistant. There must be an informer on the Oracle. I can't believe it. Sweet, innocent David. They don't trust you. 
They never trusted Hermes. They don't trust anyone that's questioning, a thinker, an intellectual. Eve. Is there something I don't know about you and Kent? He's a strange man, David. Eve. Look at me. The truth. David, when you took over the space oracle, and we weren't seeing each other anymore, I spent some time with Kent. Oh, come on, David. I mean, nothing came of it. I mean, he's hardly my type, David. But he was persistent. And uh, he doesn't take no very gracefully. I finally had to tell him that nothing was ever going to come of it. I mean, we were just two different people. Oh, David, it was really a long time ago. I believe. I'm sorry. Eve, I'm so close to a major breakthrough. I'm so glad you're here. I missed you so much. Didn't you know that all you had to do is ask me and I'd be there for you? Hermes Adamson? Get up. But there is no need for that. I am willing to come with you. And get your belongings. I need none. And come with us. You're being moved. Respect, Respect that I am old and my limbs may not move as fast as your impatience permits. Come with us, old man. Let's go. You are young and blind. I have much to learn. I am coming. Sometimes a man's character can change in an instant if his heart is ready. Identify yourself. Dr. David Trott, 634 JK. Destination. Space Laboratory Oracle. One moment. Are there other personnel aboard, Dr. Trough? No, I'm alone. You may proceed. How'd it go, David? Terrible. The worst? I'll tell you about it later. Sounds like you had a terrific time. Uh, David. Hi, I'm Paul Koblenz. Oh, I'm sorry, this is uh, Ashley Baker. Nice uh, to meet Paul you. Paul Koblenz, he's our computer operations officer and my uh, friend. Nice to meet you. So, uh, what department are you going to be uh, working for? Well, I'm not exactly sure what I'll be doing. Could you call us down there? Got a lot to say. Right away. Oh, David. I can't get over that rehab project. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about it some of the time. Right. Day. See you around, eh? All right, everybody, take it easy. You'll find out in a second, all right? Santa well, Santa Santa. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's introduction time. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is uh, Dr. Ashley Baker. She's an expert in uh, metabolism, particularly cell degeneration and mitosis. Mm. Ashley, I believe you know Paul. Yes, hello. Standing next to Paul is, uh, is Fred Jones. He's our structural engineer. Hello, Fred. He's a shark. Oh. <laughs> Here we have uh, the eminent Mark Witherspoon, our nuclear physicist. Also the man who takes care of this craft in case it gets in any trouble. Now, uh, if you want to win some money at chess, play him. He's terrible. Oh, Thanks, no. <laughs> Over here we have Bob Callahan. Hello, Bob. Bob was uh, kicked out of the university for radical research, which resulted in the Callahan theory. Oh, I thought that was done by a team of researchers at the university. No, uh, it was discovered in my kitchen by mistake. <laughs> oh. Next, we have 
The Inco Linda Banky. Oh, what can I say about Linda Banky? What can I say about Linda Banky? We try to say not too much about Linda Banky because she's smarter than all the rest of us. No, I'm serious. She got two PhDs before she was 16. Okay, okay, yeah, that's enough. enough. Getting jealous. <laughs> well, time to sit down and hear the bad news. Uh -oh. Wonderful. 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 Lecture. That's what we need. Uh, knew it had to come to the... Guess what old project of ours the World Council wants reactivated? Uh, <laughs> which one? Don't keep us in suspense, tell us. <laughs> no, 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 I see the Commodus, sir. You got it. And they want it in 30 days or else they'll shut us down. Impossible. <laughs> Not impossible. Nothing's impossible. David, I couldn't even build the electronics in 30 days. You will build the electronics in 20 days, and I will be working on our alternate solution. A miracle machine? Is he serious? I'm afraid he is. Take a look at him. <laughs> look, I know it's an unthinkable time schedule. It's 24 hours a day, non-stop, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And we do it until we finish both projects. What if we say no to the co-inducer? Oh, well, then we'll be shut down, I'd be arrested, and you'll spend the rest of your life washing test tubes. Ha! Ah, well, let's get to work. Then I guess it's time for us to understand how this uh, miracle machine of yours is going to work. Yeah, if we knew the mechanics of it, then we could help you. Well, let me get this straight, David. All I understand is that our goal is to contact the universal intelligence, the ultimate being. So far, we've been working with cells and plants. Yeah, what can we do to help? What you can do to help is meet me in the assembly in one hour. All right, Dr. It could be worse. 20 days. 20 days. Ready? Yeah, come on, people. Jones? Witherspoon? Why don't you put that steel plate on this table? Mm -hmm. The purpose of this demonstration is to show you that the physical world will respond to mental energy through this crystal. Now, I want you to put away all doubts, any skepticism. I need your mental support while I concentrate. I'm getting goosebumps. the generator I never built a generator I am the generator what yeah. I don't believe you that's impossible the only mechanical device used here is this crystal the energy came from my thoughts this is the generator this crystal is the amplifier come on David what are you trying to pull with this hocus pocus Draw some sort of trick yeah, you know me better than that any one of you can do it Linda come here. Now, picture a red circle with a green triangle on it and project it into the center of the room. And don't just think that it will be there. Know that it will be there. Do you understand? I understand the principle. I'll try. Don't try. Know it will be there.
I, I, I don't know if I'm imagining things, but I saw it. I saw right, something. No, so it's not just a theory, huh, David? You know, I have read about things like this, but I've never seen an experiment. You made a believer out of me. I, I, I can't believe that I did it. You all see? I mean, I understand. <laughs> it the was sensation him. was there, but... We all had the there sensation. Is. Hey, huh? now that you believe it, practice it. Oh. 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 I know, but the mad doctor is busy changing water into wine, no doubt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are those the eyes of devotion or longing for the scientist? Oh, come on, Becky. You know that he's more than just a scientist. Uh -huh. Those are the words of a lady in love. Um, Becky. <laughs> too hard as usual. Well, I know how much this project means to you, David. I know how much your work has always meant to you. David. just wondering what would have happened if we'd gotten married and we had the kids we wanted to have. Instead, you married your work. I often think the same thing, too. Then why didn't you ever do anything about it? decided to open and someone was standing right where we are, you'd get stuck right out. That'd be the end of that, pal. You didn't see anyone? No. Hey, what's the matter? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You look a little tired, man. You better head this attic. Yeah, well, I've got a lot of things to do. So do I. Regarded. Second secret project continuing. Massive laser projecting system. Purpose difficult to determine. More later. Who is this Ashley Baker? Is she working for security? Destroy this. Yes, sir. Send a message to Dr. Troth aboard the Oracle. Wish to remind you. First and only priority is completion of Comaducer. No other projects to be pursued. You have unauthorized personnel aboard the Oracle. They are directed to return to the nearest security station. Any variance from this directive will be regarded as flagrant insubordination. Is that all, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. Security knows someone is up here on the Oracle. 
I don't think they've identified you yet. David, have they found me out? I'm not sure. But I have a pretty good idea. David, I'm really frightened. They've sent orders for your return. I told security we will accommodate them next Tuesday. That'll at least give us a little more time. Face it, security knows every time we go to the job. <laughs> when are you supposed to go back? Oh, wait, what is going to happen, actually? Well, I have until Tuesday. Oh, fine. Yeah, take a look at this, would you? No. Hold on, what is this? Oh, David wants this for the project. Not the coma does No, the project. All right. Okay. Hmm. This now? Section 41, did security receive the last communication from the Oracle? Yes, and I forwarded his directive. Tell Vice Chairman Kent I will personally send a complete detailed report before Tuesday. Acknowledged and out. Well, well, well. I never knew you had friends in such high places. I know who that was. So you're old pals with the folks in Vice Chairman Kent's office, huh? Not bad. I'm sure uh, Troth would be interested. trouble with the computer banks. I think that had anything to do with the crystals not showing up. Well, the computer was found up. I mean, it's like someone was tampering with it, but it's okay now. Too many irregularities going on around here, Paul. The exterior port is now open. This directive came today from security. Kent wants to personally uh, come here to inspect the lab next Tuesday. Why? Paul, we have a an informer. Uh, security has agents everywhere. Let's face it. Could be someone that you least suspect. David, David, come quick. It's with us, Moon. His body's floating outside He's the dead, ship. David. Get him in. Now. I don't want a word of this said to anyone. You understand? No one. I'll need some help there. Assemble the staff. I've made a decision. It's a five hour and 17 minute flight to reach the Oracle. 
Have you tried to contact their ship again? No response. The receivers and transmitters are out. Hmm. Have an armed cruiser ready for an intercept. Yes, sir. Be prepared to board the Oracle. Yes, sir. Do it now. We have had a tragedy. One of our key personnel is dead. A friend of mine and, and yours. It appears to have been an accident, but I'm not sure. In view of recent developments in this incident, I have taken the liberty to shut down all communication with Earth. From now on, no one will be able to send or receive any messages until further notice. Secondly, the Oracle is going on a mission. I plan to bring on board a man that I believe will be invaluable to our project. Ashley here will be in charge while I'm gone. In light of what has happened recently, I, I suggest you all proceed with extreme caution. There are difficult times ahead. Now, if you have no questions, you may go. father has been moved to an outpost here called Nexus. Now, it is a minimum security prison. It's going to have to be planned very carefully. Great night, Booster. Great night. Flight plan adjustment to sequence altitude. Four, eight, six, three. Eight, six, three. Night booster. Hey, what's this? What do you got there? Oh, these are blueprints of the relocation center where Hermes is being held. David, how are we going to know where Hermes is at any given time? Well, that's our main problem. We have to anticipate a place where we think he'll be. Yes, because odds are our security is going to have him in custody. This is the one area large enough for the space shuttle to land. I've got an idea. We're going to need to create some kind of diversion with all the security personnel that'll be around. Right? Right. right? right. I agree with you. Any proposals? Well, since Bob and I wouldn't know Hermes from anybody else, why don't we take one of the shuttles, raise holy hell around the space bus? That'll give you the chance to get him without too much interference. We can meet back on the Oracle later. What do you think? No, that sounds good to me. Uh, I'll arm one of the shuttles right now. Why don't I get to see any action? Because you're going to be back up here doing your own individual work and finishing up this project. Once we pick up Hermes, we're not going to have much time to try out the communicator. Yeah, security's going to be hot on our trail. You got that right. Okay, we rendezvous back here in six hours. Six. Good luck. Okay. Let's go. So you just want me to keep the Oracle in a holding pattern? Unless there's trouble. In which event, I want you to move the ship as close to here as possible. 14th quadrant. Wait for us one hour, and then you, Ashley, and Coblenz get the hell out of there as fast as you can, okay? Okay, wait a minute. You're talking about just Linda and Coblenz, aren't you? David, I don't want to argue with you. We're talking about my father. Your father? What do you mean your father? I'm Dr. Eve Adamson. You're full of surprises, Trot. Well, the daughter of the famous Hermes. I want to go with you. No, Eve. I need you here. No. Yeah. Don't worry. This will be a piece of cake. We'll be back in a couple of hours. Shuttle one calling shuttle two. This is shuttle two. I'm all set, David. As soon as we drop into the field, you wait until the designated hour. That'll give you just less than 40 minutes to find Hermes. Go 
focus on my time indicators. It's 0600. I'm coming in with the lasers blasting. Confirm. Shuttle one out. David, you might need my Look, help. I may not be able to get Hermes back here, so I'll need you to pick us up. Besides, one of us slipping into the colony won't be as noticeable as two. Yeah, okay. You got it. Stay close to the shuttle's communicator. I'll let you know what's up. Right. Won't you need your oxygen helmet? No, we're inside the atmospheric screen. Hey, Chief. Good hunting, huh? Papers. Where are we going? New rehab center. I want to go back to my family. Please, I'm so afraid. You'll be taken care of. Next. Name? Hermes Adamson. Division papers. Ron. May I sit over there? Yes. Thank you. All the information. Please keep your lines orderly. In order to quickly facilitate completion of processing. Attention all persons. Form a line at the processing area. When your turn comes, listen carefully to your security processor and give him all the information he requests so that you may benefit the most from your government rehab project. Trot the shuttle one. Come in, Jones. Yeah, I hear you. Listen, I've located Hermes. I can see him from here. Are you inside the disembarkation center? Yes, but I haven't been able to get near him. I'm afraid I'd be spotted. So what are you going to do? Shuttle 2 will be making its entrance in just about a minute or two. Then I should be able to get him. As soon as you see laser blasts, bring the shuttle to where you saw me enter the colony compound, understand? Right. I'll be there. Attention. All rehab designees should now proceed to the embarkation gate. From there, you will be taken to the space bus and assign seats. Attention, all rehab designees now proceed to the embarkation gate. There you will be taken to the space Hermes? bus and assign seat. David, I've been waiting for you. You amaze me. Those of faith, nature removes all obstacles. He will not be with you long. He will be destroyed by his own kind. Hold it! Go! Troth. Troth, can you read me? Yes. I've got Hermes. We're heading for the ship. I can't see you. We're at the main gate coming your way. Yeah, now I see it. Open the port door. It's open. Callahan, you can get out of there. He's already left. 
think he had some minor damage. He'll be all right. By the way, Dr. Jones, this is Dr. Hermes Adams. Dr. Adams, I'm honored to meet you, sir. You better strap in. We're not safe yet. Callahan, are you there? I'm here. Hey, we raised a little hell down there, didn't we? Well done. What's your damage status? Structurally, I'm sound. But the ship's losing power. There's also some maneuvering difficulties, but don't worry about me. Just hold on. I've got them on the tracking scope. They're not too far. Oh, my God. What? What is it? The two security fighters coming up on Callahan's ship. He's a sitting duck. Callahan, evasive flight action. React. The shuttle will turn up tight. And hit. We've got to try and help him. Of an incident at Nexus. What is it? A couple of small shuttles landed illegally. One or two men forcibly entered the disembarkation center. There also was a laser exchange. Find out who it was and why and how it could have happened. One of the shuttles tried to contact our security ships. I don't know what that's about. I've got an idea who's behind it. You take care of it. Keep me informed of any developments. Yes, sir. They're coming at him again. Security, listen to me. No, don't fire on me. You were notified. I'm one of Security, please. Somebody listen. I'm working for security, please. I can't believe it. Callahan. It was Callahan. David, do you think he could have killed with a spoon? We all know him as a friend. The deed is done. Justice is served. Evil has destroyed its own. Security's right on top of us. Let's get out of here. Shuttle one to the Oracle. Come in. We're here, David. Looks like you had some trouble. Activate the Oracle's airlock port. Prepare for an immediate jump into hyperspace. As soon as we've entered the airlock, make the jump. Without securing the shuttle first? Just do it. Shuttle one out. All right. taken 12 G's inside the shuttle. Hermes, I think you'd better be checked by medical, sir. No need. I am safe and well. All right, sir. Good. Hey. Father, I knew we'd see you again. It was meant for us to be together during this time. I remember hearing those words before. I still don't know how you all made it. Hermes uh, has a way with nature. <laughs> Careful, Hermes. Our time was not yet up. Well, if you'll excuse me, sir, uh, maybe luck had something to do with it. When mankind realizes they are the dreamers of their reality, they will be able to change their destiny. Come on, Father, let's go up to level five where you're going to be more comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, David, he's really something. An enlightened being. One who sees this world as a dream. And one who believes that you can alter your dream world just as you can your own dreams. That's a little deep. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, I'll uh, take mine on faith, all right? We lost Callahan. Yeah, I heard on the monitor. I still can't believe it was Callahan. I'm so sorry. No, Hermes knew even before. Hey, team. I would like to raise a toast to the living. And I hope we can manage to keep it that way. To the living. Here, here. Oh. Am I interrupting anything? Oh, no, of course not. Why don't you join us? Oh, thank you. Where's Hermes? Oh, he needed some quiet time to himself. Oh, good. He's going to need his energy for what we're about to do. Uh, the miracle project? Exactly. You know, I just have a feeling, if it's at all possible, that man Hermes can do it. Did you get a chance to finish work on the components? Yeah. It's all set up in the main lab. You know, I got to tell you, 
I've never put together anything quite like that before. What do you say, Chief? Want to hop up and take him for a spin? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Your work is magnificent. Hell, man, I just built it. You designed it. I am impressed. David, it is beautiful. Well, I feel more comfortable now that your father's here. What's his role in this project, anyway? Well, as you know, this piece of machinery requires all the mental energy it can get. That's where Hermes comes in. Right. You see, this is just a projector, a powerful amplifier for mental images. It's kind of like praying only with modern technology. Exactly. And Hermes is the master of concentration. So Hermes will be projecting mental images to this higher intelligence. Hermes, Eve, myself, all of us. I don't know about you guys, but I feel we're on the verge of an incredible breakthrough. So what are we waiting for? Well, we'll have to orbit near Earth, the point where the problem exists. What about security forces? Hopefully they won't be expecting us. OK. I'll turn the oracle around and we'll head for Earth. I'll prep the system. Gotcha. Where do you want me to put the ship into orbit? Within 20 to 30 miles of Earth's surface. Somewhere on the night side above the equatorial region should do. Okay. At present speed, we should be there in less than 45 minutes. Well, when we establish our position, throw a protective screen over the main lab's panel ports. You gonna open them up? For the laser projection. I lock in the screen in front of you. Well, I'd prefer you stay at the controls in case there are any problems. Whatever you say. So, I wanna speak to God. Screen's in place? Affirmative. You can open the portals when ready. Um, keep your eye on the tracking scope for the security ships. Right. So, the moment has arrived. My word, you've done a great deal of work on this. I've only applied modern technology to the principles you gave us. Very good. This is the moment of truth. I hope it works. So do I. I have faith. Have patience. have a laser lock on the Oracle and moving in. Good. I want the crew arrested, and I want Adamson and Troth brought to me personally. We'll be making contact in 45 minutes. Good. Very good. David, looks like security's right on top of us. How much time do we have before the ships are on us? I estimate 43 minutes, plus or minus a minute or two. It's not much time. Are we ready? Go. Oh. I guess I got a little too close to the juice, huh? David, security saw that flash. All we can do now is run. I, I can't see any malfunction. Circuit relay is okay. Nothing wrong. David. The message has only just been sent. The answer will come. The amplifier didn't hold up. David, you believe that a higher intelligence pervades the universe? Of course I do. Then it knows all. 
The answer may not come in our terms or when we want it, but if we have faith, it will respond in its own manner. But I've done everything I know how to do. Where is our ultimate being? The ultimate being is within us, right here, right now. Why do you doubt? Maybe it's because I've spent too much time in the sciences. How will we know? Each man will discover the answer for himself. Gentlemen, time is running out. Come, join hands. Each of you, hold hands. Close your eyes. The cosmic consciousness is already aware of our wishes. It is up to each one of you to know its answer. Listen and become one with it. You are part of it, and it is you. surrender themselves. Captain, when you board that ship, I want everyone put under Federation arrest. I want all their personal belongings and papers collected, and I want Eve Adamson brought to me personally. And if there's any resistance whatsoever, use your weapons. I want them all, dead or alive. Do you all understand? Good. We'll be ready to board in 20 minutes. Jonesy? Yeah. What in the hell is that? I don't know. We are looking at what you call a black hole. Through which nature renews itself. Black hole? We're going to die. Nothing dies. It's only transformed. David, you do understand. The cruise is back now. We are now in the hands of nature. And what we are about to witness is the miracle of nature's renewal process. Maybe David was right. Maybe the Earth is dying. What can I do? Who can answer me? Where can I go? Where can I run to? There's no place to go.
molecules of my body are changing. Me too. I feel so peaceful. I feel wonderful. What happened? You're fine. David. Oh, I'm so frightened. Fine. Time for me to leave you. My life cycle is coming to an end. Does it have to be this way? Well, there is no reason for sadness. I am going with the most joyous of thoughts. Before my eyes, I am seeing the beginning of a new life cycle. You are the seeds of nature, blown with the wind. The seeds of life are now. reaches throughout infinity. It expresses itself in endless varieties. Its nature is true joy. Our true nature is joy. But the dark cloud of ignorance can hide this truth from man. My children, the clouds of ignorance need not fall on mankind. You shall have a mission to help the new world find solutions to their problems. You shall be guided and you will accomplish wondrous things. Remember these teachings, my words. Keep them with you. Use them, but do not abuse the meaning of the words, for only then will the dark clouds of ignorance fall on you. Now, let us tell you a story about a place called Earth before it was reborn. Mm -hmm.